Welcome to another episode of the Game Changers podcast, where we shine the spotlight on the amazing people we have in this industry, especially those who have been going through career transitions or um, are looking for the next thing that's going to come up. Uh, and I'm really curious about all their perspectives. So without further ado, uh, today's wonderful guest is Lynn Marie, and I would like to hand it over to her for a quick introduction. Thank you, Lars. Yes, my name is Lynn Marie Edlund. I'm from Sweden. I live in the very north of Sweden, actually, where it's cold and a lot of snow. Um, I've been in the industry for about eight years now. And um, recently I've been uh, joining a new company. But to say that, I'm also working with diversity and inclusion in the games industry. And with that, I have, together with Arctic Game, um, we made like a project together, like two years ago um, where we gather a lot of um, females and uh, non-binary to different events around uh, Sweden. And we also recently went to Germany at Gamescom. Yeah, I was even invited on that panel. Thanks again for, for yes. that. It was a wonderful experience uh, to be there and uh, talk to so many wonderful female leaders uh, and, and non-binary leaders there. Yeah, it was great. Thank you. It was, uh, we, they still talk about it. So. It was a good. I, I hope in a good way. You, you never know. <laughs> no, it was in a good way. I, I thought it was a wonderful event. Uh, so thanks again for organizing this. Yes. So um, to uh, get started, I always like to ask uh, a question that you know some, not so many people think about, but um, you know we try to be a bit creative here. So um, I'm wondering, Lynn Marie, if you had the chance to have a one-hour conversation with a character from a video game of your choice, whether present or past. Any idea who that would be and what would you ask the character? Oh, this one's kind of the easiest question, I think, because I have been thinking of this, of course. Um, I think I actually also already have, have a tattoo on my arm with her. So that would be Shan Li, of course. Mm -hmm. um, she was the first like female character that I came across in video games. And I think her... What I really like about some of the Street Fighter character characters, they have very deep uh, lore about the characters. So I would like to ask her, because I love martial arts, how it's been to, you know, grow up uh, being a fighter, having this, those awesome thighs as well, how you do it. Um, yeah, I think that. And I will also do it um, dinner with her, I think. All right. I mean, it sounds, sounds good. It's not one that I know much about, but I always find it very fascinating to learn you know who people think uh, are amazing from the video games history and i mean having a tattoo on your body you know that i, I guess is proof enough that you know would be her yes i really adore her and i also think she's the kind of like female character that will always be with us i think that a lot of people although they never play the game knows about chun li mm -hmm. so from from the characters moving to games and uh, what you've worked on in your eight years in the industry, or maybe other things that uh, that you've seen, um, did you through your career have one of those what some call eureka moments, one of those crucible moments with that kind of changed your perspective on things? And if so, what was that? Is there is there anything you can talk about? Yeah, and I. In order to do that, I actually have to bring up you, if that's okay. <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> yes. Let's let's see where this goes. But yeah, but but I think like when I joined the industry, I came into the industry in a weird way. I actually was interviewed like a couple of weeks ago, where they asked me like how you came into the industry, and I didn't even enter the back door. I just. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. It was more like a Fortnite moment. I just came from the sky, kind of like and crashed just down. Dropped on the map. I was drunk. <laughs> yeah. And um, it was kind of lonely and uh, not knowing my way around, trying to figure out who I am and what, what I should do in this industry. And I think that one of the things I love about this industry is the good people that you meet. And sometimes you meet people like you. And um, I mean, I felt so supported from you from the from the get-go from the start um i can't talk about the game we're <laughs> working on at the moment but it was just for me to understand 
who I am and what my strengths are in this industry. So that was kind of like, okay, this is what I can do. This is this is who I am. So that was kind of my moment where I felt that I had energy and also me figuring out, understanding what I wanted to do and and um, where where I where I fit in more. Of course, I'm incredibly humbled that you that you bring me up here, and uh, this might seem awkward to the listeners of this podcast a little bit because I, I can this is not it's not scripted or anything. I didn't know you would bring this up before. I, we ju I just shared the questions uh, in advance, but no, thank you so much. Of course, and it uh, makes me very proud to have had like a little bit of a positive experience uh, in, on, on your career and your path forward because I, I think that's ultimately what's you know, the greatest compliment you can give to anyone uh, if they help shape, you know, your path a little bit. So um, thank you so much for uh, for that. But when you maybe just to go a bit deeper in that, not, not about me necessarily, but when you realized, you know, what your strengths are and, you know, how you want to move forward, did that, what, what changed in that moment? Uh, did, did you see more clear about, you know, the, the future? Um, did it trigger anything within you? Yeah, um, I think for me, it, it became like more clear of uh, what this industry needs. Because during these eight years, and eight years sometimes seems like a long time, but eight years in this industry just passes by so fast. Well, it's, still, um, it's still a long time, but you're right, I mean, especially <laughs> with the pandemic and everything, you know, things yeah. went by really fast lately. Yeah, and it felt like I kind of understood what this industry needs, as I said, and also what you know trying to figure out being more like humble with yourself or or kind with yourself because sometimes especially when you're in an industry with a lot of talented people a very it's a very creative industry and uh, try to kind of like understand um for me it was more like understanding do i want to stay in this industry or not so mm -hmm. when you came in it was like i think it was kind of like in the beginning of the in, of the pandemic as well so I think that was kind of like me working alone quite a lot, understanding what I wanted to do. So when you came in, and of course, there was a lot of other good people uh, around. But for me, that was kind of like myself understanding how I could kind of, how do you say it, roll with the waves, um, being part of something. Because when you live up in the north, you are not kind of like in the center. You are not in Stockholm. You're not in like in Germany. You, you, you're you not kind of like part of that. So I'm very happy that I have Arctic Game up here so that I'm kind of involved uh, anyways. But for me at that moment, that was kind of like, I'm not giving up. It's going to be tough. But in order for me to go where I want to go, I need to be... Um, I don't want to, I didn't I don't want to say the word fight because it's not that but I think it's more being kind to yourself letting letting things take time because I'm like the person who wants things to happen right away but sometimes some things needs to grow and it takes time and it's always difficult for me as well, realizing that I need to have the patience to see things happen and sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. You, you said a moment ago that the industry needs something. Um, what do you think the industry needs at the moment from, from your point of view? Looking at what is happening or what has happened the last year, um, I think, I mean, I'm not a business person like that. When it comes to the money and the business and everything, I don't really understand the, the model, really. I what I loved about the industry when I joined I don't feel it's kind of like connected to that and for me it's like I'm a very creative person myself and I think when it comes to the games industry we are creating games like toys and therefore I think we need to create this like very friendly creative environment sadly money needs to be there but money also kind of like shapes decisions right and these decisions make me so sad so often. And the recent months have been very tough on this industry. We will learn from it. We will grow from it. I do, un I do understand that. But I think, I think uh, we need to take care of each other. Um, I think it's, and I, we do that. I'm not saying that we don't, but I think we have to be 
I don't know. It's a tough world right now. And uh, I think this industry, of course, needs to learn from, I, I'm not going to say mistakes, but from what has happened and to kind of take example from what we have done and not uh, make the same mistakes again. But I, I think we need to be more kind. And I, I uh, couldn't agree more. And I think the industry as such made a lot of mistakes in, in the last year. And when I say that and use the word mistakes for, for me, it's really about putting short-term gain over long-term viability of teams. So I do think that uh, we need to focus more on, you know, building those, those long-term relationships and maintaining them and having strong teams that ultimately create the entertainment experiences that we all want so badly. So yeah, this year I, I couldn't agree more. It was a tough one. I had my fair share of experiences in that regard over the past uh, couple of weeks and months. And uh, I can only hope that 2024 20, and beyond will be much better in that regard. Uh, I'm positive, but I'm afraid it, it might take a while, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to also uh, you know, start this podcast to at least help a little bit and provide a platform for people to share their minds. So um, moving from, from this topic um, a little bit over to games and, and actually games that you enjoyed um, uh, more in the past this time. So I'm wondering if you, if you look back, um, I know you played a lot of games and, uh, and, you, and you love them a lot. Is there any particular game or games that stand out um, that you would have loved to work on and for what reason? Oh, there's so many. <laughs> Yeah, when you, I saw you, that you gotta, question, you, I was uh, like, this you know, is so hard. Ears, so just, just figure out the one that is uh, the most important to you. Or maybe two. I, I grant you two if you like. Oh, thank you. I came across a TikTok the other day. There was this guy, he said, what if there was one game that you could erase from memory and replay it for the first time again? What game would mm -hmm. that be? And, uh, it, oh, that's a good it, one. It, well. it, that was so good. Yeah. And of course, Bioshock came up. For me, oh, that wow. was kind of like one of the... Um, I love movies. Uh, I love a good script. And um, I felt that Bioshock at the time when it came was kind of like... I mean, the experience was nothing that I've seen before. I think that was kind of like one of the best games still to this day. I replay it like once a year and to just like, I think it just gives me this, uh, uh, I love thrillers in, in movies. And I think that I love scary games and I still get jump scares from that game. Although I know exactly what's going to happen. But I, I remember when I played the first time, I put all the lights on in the house because oh, I yeah. lived out in the woods and, and I was alone at home. I was so scared. It was a um, really great game. First time I saw Big Daddy in the game, uh, it was amazing. I had like the little figurine on my desk for a long time, and it, it was it was great. And uh, it's anytime uh, you know someone says the phrase "Would you kindly?" these days, it all reminds me of the game. I don't know if you remember the reference there, but yes. uh, you, you, after a while, you notice this guy always says "Would you kindly?" to the <laughs> event, uh, and it, it, it got pretty creepy <laughs> at some point. Yeah, so, yeah, it's Bio, a good Bioshock franchise. Is a great game. And there's also another game that I to this day can hear the sound of it, and that's Grim Fandango. Do you remember that? Oh game? yeah, oh yeah. I haven't. This is one I haven't finished. Uh, I finished Bioshock, <laughs> all all the ones, but uh, not Grim Fandango. But I know it. Yeah. Grim Fandango was also. I mean, this is an older game, and if I would have worked on it, I would have been like ten. <laughs> so that doesn't add up. But um, I think that game was also like. I don't know, the same thing there, the characters, the story. And I don't know, I just loved it so much. And um, I think here at the office, I think I have it somewhere. Um, but yeah, that, those games, I mean, I would love to work on a, another Bioshock game. I think there's room for more. Oh, I would love to uh, play another one, so <laughs> for, yeah, for sure. Yes. <laughs> they were really good. I might actually steal that uh, TikTok question that you said, like if you could erase one a, a game from your memory, uh, you yeah. know, and play it again, which one would be it's so uh, good? I might take it for the next episode. <laughs> so I give you, I give you credits, and you can give the credits to the person who came up with the question. <laughs> I will try to find them again. So. Um, from from games um, more to the general industry. I mean, obviously, we touched it uh, already a little bit, uh, like the challenges that we were going through um, in in 
recent years mostly. But if you think about um, it challenges in the industry or in a, a particular game or game development in general, is there anything you feel very passionate about uh, in, in this industry that you would like to solve somehow or like to address? And what would it be and how would you go about it? You mentioned earlier when we talked about the industry being working very short term. Mm -hmm. um, I come from um, the north of Sweden where we have traditional industry, um, such, such as like the you know, iron industry and, and now it's batteries and stuff. And I think we need to think about the long term, how we work with people long term, because I mean, looking at the world, we are talking about traveling less, um, changing how we live, how we work, uh, what we do, how we are traveling and such. And I think the industry kind of needs to work more long term, think about the people that we work with, because looking at the games that we like, I think that some of the games, they are that good because of the people that works with them. And that the same goes, for example, if you go to an art gallery and you see um, art, the person that created that art was able to do that for a long period of time. And that's why it becomes so good. I think the same thing goes with games. You need to kind of think about how to make it long term and sustainable for a long term. So I think that sustainable work is really important. Um, because the games industry is so big right now and therefore I think we kind of need to take a responsibility for that. I mean, we're talking about games becoming movies, TV series and or TV, you say, stream series. I don't know how to say that now these days. But I think that's something that we need to think about. And for me, that like working in a sustainable way, especially... I mean, you and I, we have kids. We want them to grow up in a sustainable, with a sustainable industry. And for me, I think the games industry could actually lead the way for other industries. Yeah, I would agree. I think we have a lot of work to do in that regard. And uh, I think sustainability in that case goes beyond uh, the immediate um, environmental topics. It also goes into how we treat people, um, uh, how, like you say, how we think about things long term, uh, how this something remain viable. And uh, we don't always focus on like the immediate next quarter uh, from a financial point of view, but rather like what comes beyond and what's the vision that we're trying to build as a company, or as a game, as a company and, uh, and as, a, as a wider industry. So I, I know that you're also like a very vocal ambassador of uh, diversity, equity and, and inclusion in this industry. And, uh, you know, I, I think you and I share uh, a lot of similar views on that, but um, what do you think we need to do in that regard? Uh, are you hopeful for you know the next couple of years that uh, kind of this this topic will uh, you know not be something that you have to bring up all the time because it becomes more natural in in companies? Or do you think you know that the the struggle and the fight to some extent will uh, have to go on for quite some time? Yeah, looking what, because I, when I joined the industry, I think like a year later or something, this Me Too movement started and there's been a lot of movements during the years, of course, but looking at how the world looks like today, I think we're in for a long fight. Um, I think it's it feels sometimes like it's like one, two steps forward, one step back. Mm -hmm. And I think that is... Um, I think that's good and bad. I think it's like it keeps us on the toes. But I think we need to always address it in different rooms. Because my experience <laughs> comes to that. Like when it comes to some studios, uh, especially indie studios, I think a lot of them are really good at it because they come directly from school. They know yeah. they've been talking about this. They're very good at creating. Uh, a lot of them are very good at creating a good uh, culture. Uh, because this comes with them from their, like, um, I mean, when they they have been growing up uh, in, uh, in a more, like, better environment, I think, in schools than a lot of the older ones did. So I think that um, we should always 
always um, teach each other and educate each other when it comes to diversity because that would always be needed. But I think it's very important that we kind of like bring it up in the bigger rooms um, where representation representation <laughs> needs to be yeah. improved. So, yeah, I yeah. think this is, uh, is what I've seen as a bit of my mission in uh, recent years and also going forward um, that I try to create that space um, that I make room for all the talented people in the industry and to kind of you know, try to lead by example whenever I can. And, uh, you know, I hope that there's many more people out there and I see them daily, you know, whether it's online on LinkedIn or when I have personal conversations, people are making a difference in that regard. And I think we are moving in the right direction. And it's funny, sometimes it seems like you need the business reasons for that. Um, but slowly, steadily, people are realizing that not only does it make for better teams, it actually makes for better games. <laughs> and ultimately, they sell better. So if there's one thing that uh, you know convinces even the last naysayers um, when it comes to the importance of diversity, equity, and inclusion, then I think you know this is it shouldn't need that, but it seems like uh, you know that's what convinces uh, you know even the last ones. So let's let's be hopeful and to keep the work going that we do. So uh, if we combine everything that uh, we talked about now and, and think a bit about, you know, your dreams going forward, uh, any aspirations you might have, you've been, you know, going through a very interesting journey uh, in this industry so far. Um, you know, we might even call it a bit of a roller coaster ride, uh, similar to you know some experiences that, that I had as well. Um, where do you see yourself going forward? What are your dreams? What do you want to accomplish in this industry? Do you how do you envision the future that would, that you would like to be a part of? I know it's a difficult and probably loaded question, but uh, you know I'm curious um, where you see uh, this going. Yeah, yeah, it's it, like of all your questions, this was the hardest one actually. That's why I ask it, right? That's why. I'm yeah, here. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> But it was also a good question because it made me rethink some of my decisions. So I think it was a good question. No, but I, I, um, I don't think that I can put myself in a particular role, dream role, because I think this industry has so many different roles. And I know that regardless of what role I have, I want to be a door opener. And um, I want to be able to be creative to work with good people um, to make sustainable choices uh, wherever and wherever I go. So I think that was kind of like, it's a very diplomatic answer, I know. But I, I think that's kind of like my way, my path forward to making sure that I do something creative. Because I am a very, like, I, I love people. I love working together with people and uh, spe especially on projects. So hopefully in the future, I will be able to work closer with the uh, games uh, that I'm doing now. Um, and maybe, maybe on my own project. All right. That, that sounds exciting. You know, there's yeah. uh, quite a few people I talk to these days that feel like ah, I got to do my, my own thing and it uh, takes a lot of guts to uh, to do it. Um, but it's always almost like magical when you get something started on your own. Uh, I guess right now, I'm also going through a bit of a transition of sorts. Uh, I don't have the guts to go like uh, full on Lars mode, but uh, you know, I, it's always amazing to see what others do uh, and if they take the risks and it hopefully then uh, pays off for the most of them. Then Marie, I want to thank you so much for uh, the insights you provided today uh, in this conversation that we had. Obviously, uh, you know, we've been uh, having a bit of a, a journey together and with very various different, uh, you know, connection points. Uh, and it was, again, as always, uh, great to talk to you and uh, get your thoughts on, on things. And I hope uh, you found it um, as inspiring as I uh, found it to have this conversation. I hope you listeners out there uh, also found it interesting. Uh, Lynn Marie is a wonderful person and feel free to reach out to her if you uh, want to support her work in terms of diversity, equity, and inclusion, or uh, just for a good piece of advice. Uh, I think she's the right person to talk to. Thank you so much again, Lynn Marie, for joining me today. And uh, thanks everybody for listening and stay tuned for the next episodes. Thank you. Thank you.